Hi, I'm Paul Modiano from Logical Developers, and in this video, we're going to learn how to customize cell contents with the cell editor in Iron Speed Designer. Now, before I dive into the configuration of the cell editor, I want to go over the spreadsheet metaphor that Iron Speed Designer uses to set up pages and to allow you to set up pages. And each cell is a TD, a traditional uh, TD within a TR, which would be a row. This means that you can go and individually style cells or style rows. With that in mind, if we select a specific cell, we notice down below that there are four tabs associated with that cell. The formulas tab, which is a uh, lesson in its own, the code tab, also another lesson in its own, the data sources tab, and the cell editor, which is the focus of this video. When Iron Speed initially generates your application, it's going to put a page together like this, and you're going to see that uh, it will generate a label for a field, as well as the field itself. This manifests itself, either the label or the field, in a gen tag which can be seen within the cell editor. It's important to note that you really shouldn't mess with those gen tags. They are to be populated by iron speed with whatever control they're there to, to generate. But what you can do is you can style the cell or style anything within the cell. And you can add all sorts of other things to the cell. And I'm going to show you how to do that. To give you a base frame of reference, here is the show orders page that is generated by Iron Speed Designer without any customization. What we're going to do is close this and make a couple of customizations and see how they turn out. The first thing I should explain is the difference between styling a row or styling a cell or styling a, a table cells contents. So Let's start with the contents, okay? If I go in and I highlight this item and I say bold, well, you can see that Iron Speed Designer puts bold tags around it. And I'm going to undo that really quickly to show you the contrast. If, on the other hand, I say I want everything in this cell to be bold, I, I select the cell and I click B and what did it do? It added to the existing class, and you could see that that cell was already a, a display field value class, DFV, but it added font weight bold to the stylings of that class. Now, it did that quickly and easily because I clicked B. If I wanted to be very precise in my definition and use uh, other stylings that are not uh, listed here, I could always right-click on the cell, hit styles, cell, and you could see we have our style font weight equal bold. And you can go in and add to this as much as you want as you would any uh, style statement. So I'm going to back out of that for a moment. And I'm also uh, going to back out of styling bold. Uh, the next thing would be uh, the row level. So we showed you on the individual item level, the cell level, let's look at the row level. If I right click and I say style, I could style the cell, the row, the row or the table. Uh, I, there's nothing here, I can give it. This would be the equivalent of saying for this row, I could say uh, style color colon 030303, oh, I'll put a semicolon. And if, in fact, I run this, you could see that the field values in that row now are, uh, they look different from those underneath them. On the other hand, if we go back in to that first row and instead style it so that the background color is yellow, this is how that change manifests itself. So I showed you that if I do wrap 
this gen tag, and I hit bold, it'll wrap it in uh, B uh, for bold. But what would happen if I changed the font type? Well, what it would do then is it would wrap it in a span tag. And you could see the span tag has the, uh, the font that is mentioned. It keeps the B in there because I said I was going to wrap the whole thing. And so the same goes for font size. If I go and I change that to 16 point, it's going to further modify that span tag to reflect that change. But the cell editor has so many other uses than just for styling. Uh, you may want to drop different kinds of controls, ASP.NET controls, into your cell. If you're familiar with ASP.NET, you probably know uh, about those controls. Uh, you, they don't have to be just native ASP. Uh, .NET controls. They could be third-party controls by companies like Dev Express and Telerik. But if we take a look at some of the stock ASP.NET controls, there are things like the calendar control, okay, which is a standard ASP.NET calendar control. And for the heck of it, I'm going to put that underneath order date. And I'm going to stick it in that cell. And you could see that it placed an ASP.NET calendar control under there. Uh, let's see how that looks. So now you can see next to my oversized label uh, and uh, directly below the order date field, uh, you could see that a calendar control is there. It's not, it hasn't been configured, but it's a calendar control and it is usable. You can go in to the cell editor and change the properties for this to configure it. You could also uh, configure it with your code behind files. What's important to note is that anything you put into a cell will be rendered to the ASPX file. So any code that you want to put in the ASPX file you can put into a cell. And for a final demonstration which may have elements that are slightly off topic, we'll do something interesting. Uh, we're going to take out our label here. We're going to take out this freight label. And then I'm going to merge two cells. And by doing that, they will be in this, within the same cell. Then we're going to right-click on this cell, and we're going to say, insert accordions. And let's look at what it has done within the cell editor. It inserted an ASP.NET accordion control and what we can do now we can take a look at it and see that uh, we have uh, one item and we have uh, an accordion accordion title one which we're going to replace with shipped date and we're going to head down and we're going to replace accordion title three with freight. And you can see it marked up everything and it put these gen tags in the right place. Let's see what it looks like. And here we are at our resulting page. If I click on ship date, our accordion control does exactly what it's supposed to. Same thing with freight. Uh, so this is just an example of the many things that you can do using the cell editor. I hope that this video has been helpful. For more information, you can visit Logical Developers or the Knowledge Base or the forums at ironspeed.com. Thanks for watching.